As we begin to create lots of classes and objects, the possibility of naming collisions increases. Namespaces in C++ are a great tool for managing this. Here I have a working copy of working.cpp from chapter four of the exercise files. And you notice this line three, and this has been in all of our working.cpp files all through the course. It says using namespace STD. This allows us to use classes and objects from the standard namespace in our code. And I just wanna explain this so that you understand how to create namespaces and how to use them. So we're gonna actually just delete this right away and make a working copy of namespace.cpp and I'll show you how this works. So here I've created a namespace called bwString and the syntax for that is the keyword namespace, the name of the namespace, and then curly brackets with a semicolon. And I always put a comment at the end so I know what that last curly brace is because a lot of other stuff will happen in between. And oftentimes actually all of this is not indented. It's oftentimes just like this right up against the left because it's usually in a header file and there's just a lot of stuff and you just have this namespace at the top and the ending curly brace at the end. So you'll see it this way a lot. My IDE actually likes to indent it because of the curly braces. It just kind of gets indented like that but you'll usually see it like this. And so here I've created a class called string and it contains a string from the standard library. So I have this string header up here in my include statement. And so this is just a simple wrapper for the string class from the standard library. And you notice that I can specify that this is the standard string by putting that standard namespace specifier before it and that's always separated by the double colon. And then this one here is in my BW string namespace because it doesn't have another namespace specified before it and I'm defining this namespace. And so this is a default constructor and you notice that I'm preventing this default constructor by putting it in my private section. And in the public section, I have a constructor that takes a standard string and then it initializes my internal string by attaching a prefix to it. And the prefix up here is in this constant that says BW string like that. And so when I come down here into my main and I build and run this, you see that I create a string and I'm initializing it with S1, which is this other constant over here, which is also a standard string. It says this is a string. And then I'm printing out from my class, the object is called S and it says BW string, this is a string. So I can tell that that's the one that I'm using. Now, if I were to take this instead and just take standard in front of it, we'll get a standard string. And when I build and run, then I get a standard string without the BW string at the beginning of it. So we know that it's the right one. So now we can tell which is which, right? And so if I want to default to using my namespace BW string, I can come down here and I can say using namespace BW string like that. And then if I take this standard off, and build and run, then you notice that I get a BW string by default. So you can use a namespace by saying using namespace with the name of your namespace. Alternately, if you just wanna use a part of a namespace, you can say using BW string string like this. And now just for the string object, it will use that particular namespace. And so when I build and run, I get exactly the same result. So that's very simply how namespaces work, and you'll see some other examples of it in the course. Namespaces are very valuable in C++, and they're very commonly used. Typically, they're defined in header files with the class definitions that use them.